All right. Uh, so this is me. Um, I speak about SharePoint and I write books about SharePoint. This is my blog. This is how you can get a hold of me. Um, so uh, if we look at the, you know, kind of get started with this, if we look at uh, the timeline of SharePoint development options and what is, uh, you know, what is, what's been available there since reasonable beginning, right? We're not talking about 2003 SharePoint and anything before that. Uh, so since 2007, you could do a real sort of type of SharePoint development. Uh, there's things like farm solutions and uh, you could do some JavaScript. And a lot of people, you know, in the developer community was like, oh, JavaScript, that's just for, that's hacky. The real developers use, you know, build farm solutions. And in 2010, you know, it's still, you know, framework solidified a lot. Uh, things were, you know, things solidified a lot from the UI perspective and from a back end. And, um, you know, we still built farm solutions. There were things like sandbox solutions. This is Microsoft's first move to uh, distributed environment. They re recognized in 2007 that there are a lot of companies out there build these farm solutions everywhere and it was harder to maintain. So they wanted to kind of localize these small customizations and also provide some sort of a rudimentary or kind of grassroots marketplace, right? So that was the, uh, the sandbox solutions. And there was still hacky JavaScript around uh, available as an option. Um, in 2013, there were still farm solutions. There was uh, now <laughs> known a hacky sandbox solution because Microsoft discouraged uh, kind of started discouraging people from using sandbox solutions because they introduced apps. Um, and, you know, JavaScript options were still available there. They were kind of given a little bit more um, recognition. It wasn't, it was no longer such a hacky approach. It was a pretty viable approach to do some stuff, uh, especially considering that <laughs> bless you, uh, apps were all uh, uh, JavaScript. Uh, so Microsoft had to recognize kind of that direction where this is going. Uh, 2016 and SharePoint Online, so this is where we are now. Um, there's still farm solutions. Yay! So everybody who's planning to move from wherever you're moving from, 2010, 2013, I hope not from 2007, <laughs> to 2016, you still have a farm solutions options. They're not dying. Microsoft didn't say anything specifically. They're not, they are dying or they're not. Like, there's just, you know, there's still an option. Uh, and we'll get into Q&A at the end where I can elaborate more on that. I'm not going to hijack this introductory slide about this. Uh, but, you know, apps are still there. Uh, what you can do with apps, Microsoft's kind of changing guidance what you should be using apps for and what you shouldn't be using apps for. But the apps as a fr as framework is still there. Um, and then there's, you know, new uh, JavaScript and uh, JavaScript frameworks. Um, and the one that we're going to talk about in particular here, this tiny one bit, let me zoom in, right, this one, new development framework, that'll be the focus of our uh, discussion today. I'll show you some stuff to, to get excited about. Um, so the new development framework right now is available in SharePoint Online. Uh, it will be also available on premises, right? It's still, and the important thing to understand, it is still in, I don't want to, it's no longer called beta. It's still in development, as Microsoft says, right? Because it's now continuous, agile uh, sort of cycle. There is no beta and there is no release. There is no launch party. I guess there is, but smaller. Uh, now it's kind of more agile kind of approach. So things are being released. So now this new development framework is in development and incremental releases are being built on a regular basis. And they will make their way into a on-premises environment in one of the feature packs. Uh, but that's going to be our focus today. So what is this new development framework we're talking about? There's, I'm sure we can break it down even more, but there's a few main sections. Um, there is, uh, you know, what we call modern pages. So obviously it's all, it's all around sites, right? So just like this regular SharePoint, everything's around sites. So there's still sites, the concept of sites did not die, things are still... <laughs> We're still okay. Uh, there's sites. Uh, there's pages. But they're called modern pages. Uh, there's client web parts. So that might sound familiar. There was something like that before. Microsoft went back to this whole client web parts uh, category. There's new development model and new deployment model. So let's take a look at the de some of the details uh, in here. So modern, so modern sites, needless to say, it's a, it's a framework that now is hosting 
the, you know, the sites and everything on them. Um, so what are the modern pages? So they're referred to as new publishing pages, but if you look at where they live and how they behave, it's really on the back end, it's wiki pages that are rebranded as publishing pages that don't behave as wiki pages or publishing pages. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it, it'll make more sense once you see it in action. Um, they have their own library um, and uh, it's, they don't have a typical web part zones. And the way they look right now is they look a little bit kind of like you know, if, you're, if you've been a SharePoint developer, it just makes you really mad how they look right now. <laughs> but Microsoft says that they will look better by the time this is going to hit the, hit the uh, you know, on-premises version. Uh, because if you look at them right now, you're like, oh, well, what do I do with you, new modern page? Um, so, uh, in fact, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, at that page. Uh, so this is a new SharePoint online site. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how to get it, but you can get it for free from Microsoft, new development site. I'm going to click add a page. Um, so this is a new page editing experience. This is how, when you create a new page, this is what you get. So this is your name of the page. So I'm going to say my page. And this is how you add web parts, right? And you probably saw this online. If you haven't, here's how it looks. So you can add, you know, quick links, right? And it adds this quick links. So let's add some more. Let's add... Uh, um, I don't know, a document or embed, uh, why don't we add an embed code? And I'm going to take one of these videos that I have and show you how this looks like. Okay, so I'm going to add an embed code here. Uh, and there it is. So it's kind of like, you know, properties are very dynamic. You can save and close. And here's how your page looks like, right? So it's very quick experience. This is my link, so I can create a new link. Uh, you know, very kind of interactive. But there is no concept of web part zones, and Microsoft says that that will change. There will be more web part zones available. We'll see how it all pans out. But this is the new modern Pages UI. If we go back to the uh, site contents, you'll see that these modern pages actually live in the site pages. Which are which is you know formerly known wiki library. So and then here they are with all of my other wiki pages. So is it a wiki page? In in essence, I'd like to say yes. Um, anyway, so this is a, so this is a little bit of a segue into uh, the modern sites and modern pages and what they're, what are they all about? So um, so what is this new client web part? So the new client web web parts are going to solely rely on JavaScript. And they're going to have pre-built JavaScript injection. So unlike apps in the past, when you needed to inject uh, your JavaScript to the master page, that will be taken care of by the, the modern development framework. Um, there is uh, So the new dev model, you can build your apps in just jQuery, React, Angular, or Rectangular, <laughs> or Knockout, or, or none at all. Uh, you can just use plain JavaScript back to back to 2000, back to millennium. Um, and then for deployment, uh, so I put these two items because that's, you know, def deployment from a developer standpoint. We're going to use these two tools, Gulp and Yeoman, uh, to build uh, your packages. But also an important piece that to mention here, because the session is titled, what are the new development methodologies and deployment methodologies? <laughs> Is big item that's missing here is PowerShell. So PowerShell will be the preferred method to deploy anything else, right? So things like sites, and I'll give you the demo. Um, things like sites, you know, uh, content types, workflows, if you like, uh, anything else, and configure anything else. You can even provision pages. Uh, so PowerShell will be your preferred deployment method. Um, and for those of you who, who have that question, what do I do with 30 PowerShell commands? <laughs> uh, there is, uh, so there's about 30 or so PowerShell commands for online, and there's a little bit more for, for on-prem. I have an answer for you. We'll get to that to the, uh, to the end, but there is, uh, there is a solution for that. So the tools that we're going to be using, uh, and you'll have access to this deck, so you don't have to worry about writing down all these links, because there's two pages of tools, as you'll see, that are being used here. 
So the first tool is you need to get uh, Office 365 developer site. Whether you're on premises or, or, in, or in the cloud, get yourself Office 365 developer site. It's free from what I understand now. Uh, developer site is free. It's no longer some sort of a trial. It's just a free website, free site. You sign up and um, you can build and test your apps. Um, we're gonna use um, we're gonna use a tool, I would say, uh, called Workbench to um, to deploy or to test your apps uh, locally and in in a SharePoint site, the new style apps. Um, we're gonna or client side web parts. We're gonna use uh, Node.js. We're gonna use Visual Studio Code. So in this in this kind of uh, Visual Studio Code is not a requirement. You can use I don't know Notepad plus plus or uh, Sublime or any other editor. Uh, in this case, we're going to use no, uh, Visual Studio Code. It's kind of a lightweight, uh, lightweight um, code editor. Um, and continued, we're going to install our node. There is a command for you to do that. We're going to install Yeoman. And I'm going to explain all of what are these tools and, and how do they kind of map to what you used to before. And we're going to install um, SharePoint Generator for Yeoman. Um, and here's a little reference for you into, you know, with all the commands, how to set it all up and how to get your environment, how to get your site ready or your environment ready. Um, but essentially, this is, this is how we get from nothing to, uh, to, <laughs> to start development. And to be honest, how long did it take me to set it up? Following this article, I don't know, like 20 minutes, half an hour, it wasn't terrible. Right? It wasn't like spinning up a VM that requires like seven gigs or whatever it requires right now, 16 gigs, and setting up SQL and doing all the stuff that I don't want to do and running into some errors and trying to Google them. It was very straightforward. I didn't get any errors. It all worked. Uh, so very easy to set up a development environment these days. Uh, so let me kind of create, uh, show you a bit of a parody, and then we're going to jump into a demo for those <coughs> who are falling asleep. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna. So the parody is this, and it's something that I've um, <coughs> that I put together myself, and some of the stuff I borrowed from other slides um, out there, and some some of the other community uh, people that are that are talking about this. Uh, so what is your so what is your development site? Your SharePoint thousand whatever SharePoint online developer site. That's your new dev environment. What's the workbench? Remember the workbench that we had to install. That's your development environment to build UI and some in, to test UI and some interaction. Uh, Node.js is your new .NET framework. Uh, Visual Studio Code is your code editor. Your uh, Windows builds that we have to install there. That's your DLLs to call to call Office code. And Yeoman is your basically dev generator, right? One thing that's not here is Gulp uh, and PowerShell. Uh, so those are basically your your web server and deployment tools. Uh, so this is kind of a, for reference for those of you who I don't know I, I can't remember where I saw this slide originally not this particular slide, uh, but someone actually drew, drew that parallel and it was really interesting. It really kind of synced in right away. It's like oh okay so we're not talking about a whole bunch of new tools. We're talking about new tools that are mapped to something that I knew from before right. So any questions so far before we jump into the demo? Look at this animation. I, I stole it from Microsoft. <laughs> so, um, all right, so let's jump into a demo. And uh, by the way, I recorded um, this kind of demo without sound and I put it on YouTube. So if you have access to the slide deck, you can actually walk through this. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is create your, so what we're going to be building, we're going to be building just a, think of it as a, just a simple app, the Hello World app, but it's not going to be a Hello World app, it'll actually do stuff, but it'll be a very simple app that'll be deployed to a new UI and you're going to be able to debug it and look at it. And uh, after this session, my goal is that you would take some of the existing simple apps that you've had, you know, that you had in your toolbox and you'll be able to migrate them to this new framework, right? So that's my goal, to give you enough information to do that. If you can do that, then you can build on the top of it and start connecting to Azure services and do some sort of workflows and anything complicated. But I want to make sure that you're comfortable to do basic stuff. Get, get your 
I don't know, calendar web part or charts web part deployed into a new framework. Okay. You email me, I email you, you and Microsoft SharePoint. You can, sorry? I said your email. <laughs> No, no, this is this is a command. No, no, this is this is a command. We're gonna run it. We're gonna run it right now. So I've set up my development environment. I'm gonna open Node.js. So Node.js is gonna be, you know, you type in node and it shows up here, node command prompt. Now, as, so I went into my directory, I made a new directory. What I'm gonna do now is create a, uh, uh, create a new SharePoint project, so to speak. So I'm going to call, I already have SharePoint templates installed, the Yeoman templates. Uh, so I'm going to call, call Microsoft SharePoint. Okay. So just to warn you, we're going to leave it, let it run in the background because this is going to take seven minutes. I, I timed it. It takes seven minutes. The video that you've, uh, that you have, I did a little, you know, kind of like seven minutes later. Um, Right, but I'm going to show you first couple of steps, and then you can see the, the, the rest couple of steps. So we're going to just leave it running. So what's your solution name, demo, uh, use a current folder. This is a clicker, so I'm going to say sure. Uh, what's your web part name, whatever, demo. What's your description, I don't care. I'm not going to use any framework. And it's just going to start kind of creating scaffolding, right? It's going to create a whole bunch of folders. Uh, it's gonna. It's, it's actually creates thousands, tens of thousands of files. It brings up the whole entire framework for you to be able to locally debug it. I couldn't believe how big the directory was. It was gigantic. Uh, but basically, it allows you to. It doesn't mean that that's going to be deployed to your SharePoint site. SharePoint already. SharePoint Online and on Primal is going to already have that and pre-wired and everything. This is just so you can take any laptop, right? And then do this literally on an airplane without paying $8.99 for the airplane internet connection. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, so, uh, so literally you can debug your JavaScript on, right on the machine. Um, and of course, I mean, you won't be able to do things, you know, like access SharePoint object model and things like that. There's some limitations, but you will be able to do a lot of the um, UI and interaction stuff which is huge um, piece for you to get entertained on the airplane. <laughs> okay, so that, while this is running, I'll show you what it's doing. So I have a folder here. So I'm creating this demo, right, the one that I just created, but I already have two web parts that I pre-created. One I created a couple of day, days ago is already kind of modified. And another one I created just literally today at 3 p.m., uh, this web part is what is, is a bare bones after the yeoman run, it's, it's magic, right? So, so this is what you're going to see um, after yeoman run, it's, it's uh, routine. So I have it open here in Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to show you how... So again, Visual Studio Code is just an application installed on, on, your, on, your, on your system. I'm going to close the folder and show you how, it, how I got there from the beginning. So I click file, open folder, and then I would go to demo, but I'm going to go to WP because that's my scaffolding that I just created earlier. And it's going to load up all the, the entire structure and everything, and I'll show you where the source code lives and where to modify what. Um, so so in, in the meantime, this is still happening. Okay, so this is still going. Okay, so this is loading. Um, so this is my web part. The, your source code lives in a directory called SRC. Okay, under here you have web parts, you have our web, web part one, and in that web part one you have a couple of files here. So let me explain what are these files and what you should touch to modify what. Um, so these are your you know, web part properties. This is where you define your web part properties. This is your CSS file, right? And they're named pretty, you know, it's pretty descriptive. Uh, this is your manifest. We normally don't touch it unless you want to change things like description and stuff like that, web part description. And, you know, this is your typical web part manifest in this case, right? For those who are familiar with developing web parts. And this is the web part code. And uh, in here you have, it's basically all JavaScript and HTML. And all this web part does really is outputs a whole bunch of HTML. 
uh, onto a page and uh, just kind of like wire some properties to it. So when you change the properties, they change on the page. So let's see how it all runs. This is all very simple right now, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll get it kind of extended and see how things, uh, things, how things um, change. So this is this is still this um, this is still creating our project. So why don't we create a new window for new command prompt? And I'm gonna fire it up. What was the WP one? Oh, sorry, that's bug. Okay, and uh, so we're gonna use Gulp, which is another tool that we've installed. And I'm going to say gulp serve. So what this is going to do is start local web server and um, essentially uh, allow you to preview this project where you're, what, the current directory project. Uh, it'll fire up a local web server and let you preview the project and, and uh, you'll be able to interact with that UI, with the basic UI. Um, so this is going to take a few seconds. I think part of it is because I'm running two of these. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't take long. Let's give it a sec. And it should fire up. One other thing that I wanted to mention uh, that's good thing about Gulp is uh, as you, so one, once we do the serve command, it's, it starts up the web server and it links our source code and it automatically, every time you save, you'll be able to preview your changes right away on the fly. So, um, so it'll kind of pre upload things. You're not, you don't have to do things like retract, deploy, you know, copy anything, recompile, build again. It, it kind of takes care of that for you in the background. So it saves a lot of time um, when you're debugging something. Test to run, turn off all of your data and see what happens. Uh, but one thing that actually a very good question, something that I'll mention in a second um, that's, that's relevant to this. So what you're seeing right now is the local. See how it says localhost? I'm sorry, I can't zoom in it anymore. It says localhost, uh, whatever, blah, 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 slash workbench. Remember that workbench? Mm -hmm. It'll come handy in, in a second. Um, so right now, this is we're running under our local workbench. So this looks like SharePoint and the whole new UI, right? But you can't really, like, you can't connect to a SharePoint object model. You can access the properties here, and you can model, uh, you know, some interaction, which is already huge. A lot of time you need to model interaction and how users are going to be interacting with the data. So you can provide some mock data, uh, and I'll, set, I'll have a link in the PowerPoint that, that shows you how you can interact with the mock data. Or you can, um, you know, you don't have to even interact with the mock data. You can give it to your UI guys, or if you're the UI guy, you can do it on the airplane and uh, kind of wire up the interaction here. Um, so that's great, right? So this is kind of like updating and you can add more properties uh, and whatnot. So let's see how this is gonna work on our SharePoint side. So on our SharePoint side, if you follow these instruction, instructions that I, that I sent a link to, you need to basically download, this is the simplest instruction, instruction ever, you just download ASPX page, ASPX page and put into a document library. That's it. Um, and you have your workbench on your SharePoint site. So what this workbench site does, or page does, it connects to your local web server, and it automatically allows you to pick up that web part that you've just deployed. So the key thing to, that I wanted to mention to what I mentioned to Miguel, if you're if you run if you stop running Gulp, this page won't work. Because it's going to say some error saying, oh, where's your manifest? I can't find manifest. I'm sorry. Um, but if you're running Gulp, it'll automatically update that with the context of SharePoint. So see this web part that I created? Um, it's, it's automatically available here. That you, you'll say, that's great, but it doesn't do anything. How do I know that it's like not smoke behind the mirrors? It doesn't do anything with SharePoint. So what we're going to do next is we're going to update this web part to pull some list data from, from SharePoint and actually show you that it actually pulls data from a local website. So we'll do, we'll do that next. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> our, our uh, initial yo create SharePoint scaffolding is still happening. Uh, I said it's going to take seven minutes. 
I, I hope it's not using my data because then it'll take probably an hour. But it's a good test. We'll see how long it takes. I think, I think it's almost done. It's almost done extracting one of the 30,000 files. Uh, you're, you think I'm joking, but let, let me show you what happens if I go into properties of this folder. Um, um, 28,000 files. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> so, so the reason why there's so many is because, right, it's creating all of these, uh, where is it? If you go to a library, no, I think I'm in the wrong folder. If you go to, like, node modules, right, it has all of these modules for, like, a date picker and all of the stuff that you can locally debug it. Um, and, you know, all, all of the tools that are needed. And each of them has a bunch of... JavaScript files, yada, yada, yada. So that's why it's so, so large. So you can debug it locally. OK. So that's great. Um, any questions so far, by the way? Everybody kind of OK what we're doing? So we're building a web part, right? We're building a web part. Uh, and now we know how to preview that web part locally on an airplane or preview it in the uh, on at your desk. Um, so. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at what happens. Let's modify our web part to now do something like connect to SharePoint, right? Do some, some stuff. And you'll see that it's very simple. So I'll give you the code for both, but I have a web part that I pre-built earlier, and actually my PowerPoint has these three steps and code to put in three places uh, that we're going to test. The reason why I have it pre-baked is I don't want to take any chances and for things to blow up. But basically, I'm going to define my list. Um, I'm going to define my SharePoint list. And my SharePoint list is going to have title and ID. So I'm going to define that. Think of it as uh, defining, uh, uh, defining a data type right, through JavaScript. So I'm going to go into my WP1. And I'm going to go to the top here, uh, right, before, right after import. I'm going to define these data types. Uh, I'm going to go and change the render method to, instead of rendering this huge block of text saying, welcome to la 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 la, uh, it's going to say, um, basically render a list, uh, basically render a, uh, just a UL with a method that will populate it. <coughs> so I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay, so now you can see that it's like, oh, what is the render list of sync? So render list of sync, all it is, is uh, or rather than doing it in pieces, I'm just going to take the whole block here that I had uh, and copy it, and then I'll, I'll explain what everything is. Okay, so all we got here is, this is a little bit kind of off, me crazy. There we go. Uh, a little better. Um, so all we're doing, so this render list to sync, this is it. All it's doing is getting a list data and then just formatting it in this, in this format, right? Bunch, basically adding a bunch of list items to an ordered list. That's all it's doing. And then uh, the way that I'm connecting or getting a list data is, to use, is I'm using a, uh, an API, right? So in here, Instead of doing something silly like this, you can connect to Delve uh, and get like, you know, you can connect, connect to Delve, you can connect to, you know, use the API to get uh, um, the items in the list to, you can call external web services, you can do anything. In this case, I'm using the, uh, I'm just basically calling a, uh, a web service that will get me a list of, um, a list of lists or titles in my case, for this particular, wherever that app part is running. And it's running on the main side. Um, that's pretty much it. Any, any questions about this particular code before I run it? It's fairly simplistic. All I'm doing is making a call and then formatting it. And then putting it inside that UL or list. All good? OK, let's run it. So remember how I said as soon as I save it, the gulp all automatically like do its magic. So let's see. 
So I saved it. Gulp did this magic. And then I'm going to go back to my SharePoint, regular locally hosted part. And I'm going to refresh the page and see what happens. Nothing happens. So it seems like there is a web part there. But there's nothing going on. The reason why is because this is running locally. It doesn't have access to slash API slash lists. It doesn't know what it is. So if you're not mocking the object, you're not getting anything. So let's see what happens if I refresh this. I don't know if I removed the web part. I think I removed the web part. So let me add it again. I added it again. And there you go. Um, okay. So fairly simple, right? This isn't any magic demo or, or anything like that, but it should give you enough. If you can read information from the SharePoint side, you can read configuration values and provide business logic. Just a few days ago, I created a web part, for example, a simple thing. A customer needed a simple poll capability to, for people to go into the site, pick an option for, for poll to vote on, pick, pick an option, click vote, and get result. It was purely done within SharePoint like unlike capability, right? You can like and unlike items. So this this some some scenario like that can be can completely live within the JavaScript and within SharePoint, you know, realm. You don't have to do any. You don't have to have any .NET at all for anything like that or web services. Uh, so that's one example. Things like uh, you know displaying events uh, or categorizing events, grouping events. Um, you know, news, you know, your typical sliders, um, news sliders, uh, news carousels. Um, so there's a lot of use cases that can be fulfilled with this particular way. Uh, and the use cases that cannot be fulfilled in this particular way, I have kind of mapping again how, how they can be. Um, so that's kind of a simple, a simple demo. You can see here that, of course, you can preview this under different... Uh, modes um, at the workbench. Uh, so you can see how this looks on a mobile device, on a tablet, on a full screen, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we package this web part that we've just created as a regular app. There is a gulp command called gulp publish, and it creates the app file. But instead of calling it .app, it's called .sp app. And then you deploy it in an exactly the same way. So let me get to it. Um, I think it's previous video. I think this. I think this this might be the video. Essentially, oops, I'm clicking in the wrong spot here. Uh, essentially, you go to. I'm not going to play it right now. Uh, but essentially, you go to your app site and you dra drag and drop that app as your corporate app, just as you normally would, and just right click deploy. That's it. And that app that you've created will automatically render as the iframe, just as all the other apps do. And, uh, you know, its properties will be displayed in, in a little bit of a different way, but there's still, like, WebPart will be fully functional. So it's backward compatible, this framework. So it, you won't get the same improvements in terms of performance because these apps run, the JavaScript is injected right on the page versus the old school apps they are running as iframe. So there's a delay of loading the iframe. So obviously your new WebParts that you build this way are still going to run as an iframe, but they won't break with a bit of big exception. They just run like they normally would. So, so anyway, a long way to answer the marketplace question. <laughs> um, any other questions? The apps inherit um, styles. Do they inherit styles? You mean the old apps versus? Do the new apps? inherit your CSS? Yes, they do. Uh, they do inherit the, the whole CSS that's applied to the page because they're injected right into the page. But you can style, you know, obviously individual elements. Uh, and the same rule of cascading applies, right? So if something is defined um, closer to, to the element, it will take precedence. Um, so the demo that I wanted to show you is um, about a year ago or so, I started collecting this, this sounds awful, right? This opening sounds awful. The year ago, I saw I started. So I started collecting scripts. 
<laughs> I started collecting Sharepoint and PowerShell scripts. And, uh, and there are actually frameworks out there. There is a PNP framework on, uh, out there. And uh, this is kind of bits and pieces that I put together. But I wanted to show you the power of the PowerShell. Um, I know it sounds terrible. Uh, in terms of provisioning, and not provisioning just in the cloud, but also on premise. And I actually used it with several clients, and something that I didn't expect at all, but makes sense. Initially, I, I built this framework, and all of these frameworks, uh, they run. They run. So I built them for SharePoint Online. But if you if you run them locally on SharePoint 2016 on-premises environment, they run without a hitch. They run perfectly because whatever subset you're using for SharePoint Online is also applicable to on-premises. So, um, so basically, you're 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 not you don't have to rebuild anything. But some of the things that I wanted to uh, point out, for example, um, and you know what? I think the best way to demonstrate it is to show you because this is also going to take a while. So I'm running SharePoint Online Management Shell here, right? And I have a site here called Vansbug. Right, and I'm just going to refresh this page to show you that this looks like SharePoint, and uh, there's nothing in here. There's this page here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run my script, and while it's running, I'm going to talk through it and what it does, and you'll see the magic happen. <laughs> so uh, the script's asking me for the URL. That I'm going to be working with. For some reason, of course, can't copy the URL. I'm going to blame it on that screen resolution. That's it. <laughs> no, it worked. It's just my fingers. Um, I'm going to type in my username, my fancy password. Um, so what the script's going to do is connect to SharePoint Online, and it's just going to go through a set of configurations. Right now, it's uh, trying to activate a publishing feature, which is going to take three minutes or something like a one minute. And then it's going to go through a series of configurations like uh, provisioning, uh, you know, provisioning the actual site, setting the master page, setting a color scheme, uploading files, like, you know, t uh, files like scripts, uh, you know, background images, logos, um, provisioning lists, and potentially some list items, uh, list items. Um, you know, set, uh, creating fields inside lists, so you can, you know, you can do pretty much anything you would need to do, right? Uh, before and then, obviously, if you have apps to provision, you can, you can also also do that. So all of that is built with a standard, just regular uh, PowerShell. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of snippets here to give you a better idea. For example, this module, lists and fields provisions SharePoint fields. And as you can see, there isn't any special command that I'm using. I'm basically using a method. Obviously, every, everybody here is a developer, right? I should have asked that in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Is everybody here a developer? I'm kidding. Uh, any BAs? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so uh, essentially it's calling a SharePoint DLL, right? It's referencing it by, by assembly name, and then it's calling this this um, the method within the DLL, and it's you know so that's an so that's an object, and then it's setting values to that object, and executing the um, you know executing as it's uh, as a regular you know as you would execute the client script. So this is for example how we're adding uh, um, a field to a list. Uh, this is how we create content types. Well, yeah, so th yeah, this is how we create a content type, right? There's no fancy method in PowerShell sa saying list.createContentType. No, there isn't, right? Sure, if you go online and you say, you know, there isn't a command for that, but you can still do that. Um, what else? Something um, that I wanted to show you that's cool. Uh, activate features, that's easy. I'm pretty sure there's a command for that. Um, security, solutions, wiki pages. Oh, this is interesting because this took me a couple of weeks to figure out. Uh, so um, ability to provision a wiki page through PowerShell with content. You can do that, right? There is no magic to it. Uh, you create a new object. Um, 
of this kind, right? You, this is your wiki page. There's your content, and there's your file name, and then this is the method that that will execute it. And, and then you just call it as a regular, as a reg, you know, execute it as a regular client script. So essentially, no, nothing, nothing more than, and this is still running this publishing feature. But then it's nothing more than just calling a set of, uh, a set of, um, you know, existing library commands for. Uh, that and uh, yeah there's existing frameworks available there's as I mentioned BMP framework I'll include the link and uh, so you can so you can kind of build on the top of it um, I started building my own and I kind of borrowed several scripts to, to make it more full and just kind of run it how I want to run it because the way that I have it is it's running basically my entire site is configured as one big XML so I define all of my configuration through through XML but uh, the frameworks that are out there kind of work in a similar fashion. They also uh, they, they accept different parameters for configuration, but they they kind of essentially do the same thing. So I'm going to let this uh, script finish. I think it's going to take uh, less than two minutes. Is that we, do we have time? I have three minutes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So so see what it's done now. It's enabled my features, and now what it's doing. I dropped a bunch of files in the directory. And it's picking those files automatically and uploading them to a respective, uh, respective uh, folders. For instance, if I have files here and it's called master page gallery, it's going to take everything here and it's going to put in my master page gallery. If I have files called images, it's going to put these files and put them there. So essentially, it's going to copy a whole bunch of things. Then it's going to set the Bansbog master page. And actually, if we go to master page, if we go to Bansbog home, you can see these things happening on the fly, right? So it's done something. It's not finished yet. Uh, it's set the color scheme. Let's see it. Okay, it's looking better. It's provisioned a whole bunch of lists. And but wait, there's more. <laughs> it's provisioning pages. <laughs> so it's provisioned pages. So if I go to the home page again, it's now instead of showing this page, it's going to show my custom landing page with my own web parts on it. And uh, if everything goes well, and yeah, okay, it didn't. So there was a web part that errored out, and I was going to say, if everything goes well, we're going to have sorry something went wrong, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, so it's it's provisioned this side basically on a fly through pure PowerShell, and uh, right now it's in the middle of creating another side called community. Oh look, it's done. Uh, there's my community side, and it has its own template. It doesn't have a landing page. But essentially, what I wanted to show you that you can do full provisioning within both on-prem and in the cloud through this. Yes. Well, my script does. Yeah, there's a script that, that does. So essentially, yeah, breaking uh, permission inheritance or inheriting uh, or creating groups and stuff like that on both lists and sites. So it's uh, you can do... Pretty much anything. And, and the good thing is, like, I don't know if a lot of you are working as consultants, you can actually, so you can package that IP as your, as your templates, right, and deliver it at every time, and then uh, only customize a few things that you, that you need instead of kind of doing everything that you always do from scratch and potentially forgetting some things and running into issues. So, yeah, so between the web parts and between the PowerShell, uh, you're in good hands. So the PowerShell obviously is available right away. The uh, the new development framework is still in um, you know in, in development, but stay tuned. Microsoft Test is going to be released early next year to uh, on prem. So I assume they're not going to release something that's not working. Um, so it's probably going to be working. Go ahead. So presumably this is this is PowerShell using C some client side object model. Mm -hmm. Is there any equivalent in the REST APIs to do all of the same kind of thing? Do yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can do full provisioning of this and like this. You can do REST API. Yep, yeah. because it's your new full-fledged REST is the new black, pretty much. So REST will work. Yeah. Um, 